Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. So I'm Craig Goodall. This is Matt Taylor. We're from um, Bearer Promoters. Um, we organise free-to-attend music events in the Victorian Bandstand in our local park. Um, today we're going to talk to you about how we found it and our motivation and our sustainability and working with partners and our aspirations for the future. But before we start, we're going to show you a three-minute video which is going to tell you what we're all about. Um, we did it when we did a funding application for John and Dots last year. So if you can know all the bit about when we asked for a PA, but everything else is quite relevant. Unless cool. you've got a PA. Yes, unless you've got a <laughs> PA. We are the Bearwick Promoters, a team of enthusiastic yeah, volunteers who created the Bearwick Shuffle. For the last three years, we've been putting on free events in our local bandstand, which was previously unused. We support local musicians to play to new audiences and help them get publicity. And through this, our local audiences get to hear new music. We have nurtured a live music infrastructure in Bearwood, which contributes to local regeneration and has reignited Bearwood's musical heritage. Bearwood Shuffle gave our band a great opportunity to play to a new diverse audience. I'm unbelievably grateful that Bearwood Promoters have given me so many opportunities to take part in their events because it's just increased my confidence so much. Our events are free, attracting crowds from near and far, maximising the exposure for our artists to new audiences. For our local audiences, we present beyond mainstream music in their own backyards. Just that's true, but can it? Thank you to all the people who organised what's called the Berlin Shuffle in Birmingham, which was uh, all done by volunteers. It was a great thing, getting the whole community out to a park, put some fans, drink some beer. It was a very good idea, but it did, uh, and the music was excellent, and there was a lot more I thought. This might be a difficult thing to get over on some of Sundays afternoon, because there'd been a ska and reggae band who were very, very good, playing some covers from Berlin on the table. And then a gentleman got up and he announced his first song uh, and he said, Is anybody familiar with the work of Albert Cullen? <coughs> it's not the first thing it's no. better to say on the summer Sunday in the park, is it? Yeah. Our team of passionate volunteers pulled together to change the game for live music in our neighbourhood. We need to develop a more sustainable model which uses established musicians to build audiences for new talent. Our outdoor events are quite funded through donations, but this is a hard model to take indoors to small venues. Only the PA system is vital to our growth and sustainability. We'd highlight our PA to other artists and new promoters at low cost. We would create a live music community around our key assets, building an income to cover our costs. Locally or nationwide, we can help others expose all generations, young and older, to music they've never heard before. We join the dots between musically minded people in our locality and have created a sustainable model to provide free live music events. But we need your help to take the next step. Bell Shuffle, who we be independent music, play with the community, locals want to show the talents, we beloved unity, give back to the public, yes we love it, so we do this free, spitting on instrumentals, memorised by melodies. Music changed my life, when it set me free, used to rap upon the band, and late at night with 10 MCs, now I'm holding both our Asia, saving across the seven seas. If you're younger, come and grab your chance, if you've got a talent, come express it through a sing and dance, if you're a rap, rock and roll, skip to scars, swing to jazz, come on down, I'm open wide, I'm on a show, well this is rad. Dots the dots, there we Okay, now Matt's going to talk to you about our founding and motivation. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so how did we start? Why did we start? Um, what was the motivation? Um, so originally, five years ago, two musically-minded Bearwoodians had a conversation and decided it would be a great idea to try and bring back live music to Bearwood. One of them was jazz. <laughs> so, yeah. so thanks. <laughs> um, back to Bearwood. Why Bearwood? Well, in the 60s and 70s, and to the 80s, Bearwood had quite a, quite a good, was quite good for live music. Um, the local swimming baths was a, was a great, great venue. Uh, the Beatles and the Stones both played there. Um, the Bear Tavern on the High Street was a regular haunt for up-and-coming bands, much like the Hare and Hounds is in Kings Heath today. It's also home to local musical luminaries, such as uh, Dex's 
Dex's Pete Williams, uh, Musical Youth, One Extra's Bobby Friction, Stuart McConey, Rankin Roger, and it was the home of legendary jazz band leader Andy Hamilton up until his death a couple of years ago. If you're not sure who he is, look him up. His history and stories is amazing. So when we set up the shuffle a few years ago, the city centre was lacking small venues and we were all forced to trek over to Kings Heath or Mosley to see local acts, which might not sound that far, but actually it's like 15 quid in the taxi, which puts a lot of people off. Um, and then we've got a catchment area that's wider than that. We've got Quinton, Hales Owen, which is easily accessible to Bearwood. So Bearwood's a well-connected community. So over the following few weeks, con conversations were had and locals were recruited. A meeting was organised, a number of eager, eager volunteers met and discussed ideas in the pub. We talked about it for months, the conclusion every time that it was too expensive and too risky. Would anybody come to an indoor event in Bearwood? But we took a change of focus. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we took a change of focus. Rather than looking at running a commercial event, the idea moved to organising a community event one that was free to attend and would expose performers to new audiences as well as vice versa, as well as creating an event in Bearwood that could contribute to its wider regeneration. We were keen to promote new and different types of music to an audience who might not have heard it before, opening up local ears to jazz, hip-hop, grime, indie and beyond. Another catalyst at the time was the transfer of Lightwoods Park from Birmingham Council to Samwell Council. The park had been run down for years under Birmingham stewardship. The return to Sandwell was heralded as a new era. This caught our group's imagination. The bandstand, ta-da. <laughs> um, the bandstand had been unused for decades and we decided it might be a good idea to bring it back to life. So, we set up a small unincorporated, uh, oh, I've been trying to say this word all morning, unincorporated association we agreed a constitution and a set of broad aims and objectives. These are quite a lot of words on a slide, but I thought it might be easier to follow than me just re reading them off a piece of paper. So, we're constituted to operate as a not-for-profit voluntary community group to effect the mutual assistance and promotion of live music for all in Bearwood, which is accessible and affordable. To encourage and support up-and-coming and established local musical talent, by developing opportunities to play and be heard. To develop and nurture a culturally rich musical environment which promotes a diverse range of musical genres and reignites Bearwood's long musical heritage. To support a sustainable live music infrastructure in Bearwood which contributes to local regeneration. And lastly, develop skills amongst team members and the community to support the delivery of live music in the long term. We felt these aims were important as there was quite, I don't know, there was probably about, at the time there was probably about 10 to 15 of us who were working towards putting on these events. That's quite a lot of people, so we felt that we needed this constitution to make sure that we were all singing from the same hymn sheet and everybody knew where we were heading. Um, we made a funding application to Samwell Holmes um, and we secured £500 worth of funding to be split equally between three events. The Bearwood Shuffle was born. <laughs> so talking about it versus doing it, none of us had any experience with arranging live events. There was absolutely tons of paperwork to complete. Uh, temporary events notices, public liability insurance, risk assessments. There was loads of equipment to source. We didn't have any. Um, we needed PA, we needed toilets, um, and the most important thing, we needed a generator. Because obviously we've got a brilliant bandstand, but there's no, you can't plug in anything. Because uh, the nearest power's half a mile away. Um, yeah, and then it was paying for it. So £500 grants, that was split between three events, which is £166.66 p per event. The toilets cost us £150. <laughs> So where would we get the rest from? <coughs> Luckily, the team's enthusiasm, commitment and ability to blag and call in favours got us through the first event. It was a massive learning curve and first time round we got lucky. The weather was awesome. 
it was beautiful. Yeah, it was a really sunny day. Everything went perfectly. Thousands of people attended, and the shuffle was a resounding success. Over to Craig, who's going to talk to you about sustainability or lack of sustainability. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So as Matt said, the funding we had it gave us £166.66 for three events. They cost a lot more. The first event was so successful, we had over £500 in the kitty, plus the funding we'd already secured. We're now experienced promoters. Everything went perfectly. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Pretty much everything. I won't bore you too much, but the main thing that went wrong was the generator. Um, if the generator doesn't work, you have problems. Either you've got no power or you set stuff on fire. We set stuff on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Monitor desks, mixing desks, speakers, amplifiers, guitars, keyboards, pretty much everything. It was a bit like sort of the Battle of the Somme, but reinforcements kept coming in. And the equipment either miraculously survived or it melted. Um, I remember the, our headline that day was a guy called um, Aziz Ibrahim. Um, he was a well-known session guitarist, records like Paul Weller a lot. Um, he replaced John Squire in the Stone Roses in the mid-90s. And these beautiful leather clad martial amps. You don't want to plug them in, is these? I insist. Okay. <laughs> Gone. He wasn't very happy, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> but we carried on, everybody played. The event was a success because somehow we delivered it. Um, but looking back, it is amazing how nobody died. And, it was <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm only half joking when I say that. And, but we learned a valuable lesson, um, you know, blagging got us so far, if we're going to get serious, we either needed to call in better favours or raise more money. Uh, but yeah, in terms of blagging, I've always been absolutely amazed um, how much people have helped us over the years. They've bought into our ethos and bent over backwards. Like the, the event when everything set on fire, a guy came up to me, hi, I'm Andy. Uh, I own a music studio, I've got a better PA than that, you can borrow it for free. Oh, thank you very much. Um, another event, we met a guy, he said, oh, I've got um, you know, a geodesic dome you can borrow if you want. How much would that be? Oh, nothing for you guys. It'd normally be one to two grand, but you can let you have it. I'll set it up, it'll take about five hours, but no problem. And you know, it's very, very, very humbling when people do these things, but it just goes to show what you can achieve when people can sort of buy into you and your ethos and what you stand for. Um, moving back to sustainability, well, we got more organised. We're very British. We set up a committee. Um, <laughs> I was promoted from DJ to chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Matt was promoted from, from ladders to being in charge of programming and music. <laughs> Joe was promoted from cakes to secretary. <laughs> So you didn't have to be there long. <laughs> we wrote job descriptions. We got, we got very anal about it, but, but, we, but everybody knew what they were doing. Um, and then more importantly, we developed new income streams about how we were going to pay for our events. Okay, so we developed stalls. We charged local arts and crafts stalls a fee to have, have a pitch at our events, and it also added to like, the feel of it, and there's more to do for people when they were there. Um, we improved and expanded our food stalls. So we went from having the BAP mobile <laughs> burger bar and we got along Jen and her organic food collective. We got a mobile pizza oven in. We sort of just gradually built it up. But more importantly, all of those food stalls paid a percentage of their gross takings to be there. Um, sponsorship, we got a sponsorship deal of our local fish and chip shop. And then they bought a space on our flyers. We got hundreds of pounds for that, but it's probably still not commercially a worthwhile thing. We probably need to make him pay a bit more, to be fair. Um, we developed our own store. We sold cakes, samosas, cans of Coke, old books that anybody had, and made a fortune. Yeah, and not only that, we stopped anybody else having a store that would compete with us to make sure that we could maximise our own income streams. And then we did the classic bucket collections. We went round with the bucket. You need to send somebody enthusiastic around, preferably somebody that's young and good looking. No rules out Matt and I. But for some reason, we've always done quite well with that as well. So I encourage you to do that. Um, our last shuffle was the most expensive. And it cost about £1,100. Not a lot, but a lot to us. And particularly with all the gear that we got hiring. 
Um, it wasn't a nice day, it rained a little bit, but we covered all of our on-the-day expenses just from the, those income streams there. And if it had been a bit of a nicer day, we probably would have made a healthy surplus. But despite this, we still need more cash to drive our events forward. Um, the people who make the event are the artists, and they don't get paid, so they're doing it for the love of it. So to make our event truly sustainable, we need to raise more money. It will also reduce our stress levels, as we know, because we're paying them, that they're definitely going to turn up. Um, another key area for us has been building up our volunteer base. Um, when we start, we were really good at collecting people's email addresses, phone numbers and stuff like that. So we were able to develop a small sort of team of volunteers who, some have got involved in the committee, others just turn up on the day, help set up, take things down. But it's really helpful to have as many hands as you can when you're trying to sort of deliver an event and you've got lots to do. Um, our biggest challenge now is revitalising our organising committee. Um, a few of our founding members have sort of stood down recently, they've moved out of the area. Um, so we need, you know, that's something we're dealing with now. So if anyone wants to be our treasurer, have a word with me after, please. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the best role to hand out to a random stranger. <laughs> <laughs> we're pretty desperate. <laughs> <laughs> we are pretty desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to talk about um, partners. Um, despite you know, all our like, enthusiasm going in, into things gung-ho, there's a lot of people that we need to work with. So, for example, Samar Council, um, you talk with their Parks and Countryside Department and their licensing team, the Friends of Lightwoods Park, um, Wardy Woods Trust, somebody local we work with, all our plant providers, people provide toilets, generators, our PAs, our sponsors, our storeholders, and importantly, our local musicians. Um, the key bit of advice I can give to you here for partners is you've got to put the effort in. You've got to, you can't just go to them when you want something. You've got to try and help them as well. And for us, this is about you know, going to council meetings, retweeting band links, talking positively about your sponsor. Basically, anything you do for them could be beneficial for you in the future. So, for example, with Wally Woods, um, we do a music stage for one of their events. And last year, they really helped us out because they, basically they hired the generator for us. We pay for it, but we use their account, use their compound to store it. And without working together in the previously, we wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, but it's not as simple as that. Despite working with these people, there's a lot of small P politics involved in like, your local community. We've been filmed, so I'm not going to go into it in too much detail. <laughs> but be aware. <laughs> OK, and I'm going to hand over to Matt, who's going to talk about our aspirations for the future. Boom. So what do we want to do? Where do we want to go from here? As we said previously, we've become, uh, yeah, we, our events have become more organised and they're becoming more professional. That's great, but we still want to maintain the fun factor. One thing's for sure, you will never see a bouncy castle or a fun fair at a shuffle. There are other events that cater for that. They're all agreed that the future is about music, first and foremost. We want to remain free, but we want to pay artists, as Craig said earlier. We are currently dependent on artists' goodwill to play for free, and I hope they'll be enticed by a good-sized audience. This is a dilemma for us, because we really need to draw in good acts, good headline acts, that will draw a crowd and give exposure to the local artists on the rest of the bill. Indoor events. So what we started talking about was indoor events. This is, this is like a constant source of exasperation for us because really we want to run a, a year-round program of, of indoor events. We've got the spaces to do it but unfortunately financially it's still going to be a massive burden because um, we I don't think we get bands to play for free indoors so yeah it's, this, is, this is a tough one. Um, the joy of being outdoors is that people can bring the children and let them run wild indoor events, more, de more dependent on getting a younger audience on board and having an act that with enough pulling power to attract, us, to, to attract an audience. Going forward, we want to improve on our links with the local community and increase our sponsorship offer without selling out. We're keen to work with other community groups and more musicians. Our next event is planned for the end of July. However, the local park is out of action. The bandstand in the park is out of action until mid next year because it's still the bandstand and the part of the park as a whole is being overhauled um, 
So, as Craig talked about our connection with Wally Woods earlier, they've agreed to let us put on an event at the end of July. Um, and I think Craig mentioned there's some guy's going to lend us his nine metre geodesic dome with a huge stage. Yeah. So, we're going to put that up in Wally Woods and hopefully have a shuffle there. Um, yeah, now all we need is a headline act. Um, so, lastly, before Craig wraps up, um, we've got a small video, another small video that we want to show you. It's basically just a performance from one of the guys um, who can you just whack it onto the next. I don't think it'll start playing. Yeah. So, these two lads, this was the first shuffle. These two lads were just rapping in the park. There's a skate park in, in Lightwoods Park, and they were just rapping, and this guy in the middle was, I think it was half, half a bottle of whiskey to the wind, to be honest. But <laughs> so he was sat in the park with his guitar, approached them and asked them if they wanted to write a tune. So they'd never performed before. Um, these two lads had never performed before. Kamari's done a, done a few bits and pieces, I think. So they wrote a tune and then they came up to us and said, can we have 10 minutes on the stage? And, um, and uh, so we got, I think we were running a bit, a bit um, yeah, we got more time than we expected, so we gave him a 10 minute slot. And um, Mr. Naylor, who's this guy over here, has always said that doing this gave him the confidence to go on. And since then, he's, he's now DJs for a local radio station. He's been abroad and done, um, done residencies, emceeing in, in various places around Europe. Um, but he always says that this opportunity at the shuffle gave him the confidence to go on and do that. So now you can listen to his rap. <laughs> It's all completely yeah, blurred yeah, out. It's locked, yeah. it's locked down. Yeah, it's completely locked. Yeah. Okay, forget that bit. <laughs> <laughs> they were quite Sorry, good. They were quite good. They, they were quite good anyway. They performed really well, and he <laughs> went on to do loads of amazing stuff. <laughs> and we're really proud of that. <laughs> the, he made a load of money. None of us did, though. We so could try. Simple. We could try and reenact it. Has anyone got his car? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be terrible. <laughs> Uh, possibly, yes, it yeah, it's on YouTube yeah. somewhere. So look, yeah, that, that, includes, that concludes our talk. I'm just going to end with a few plugs. Um, our next event is at Wally Woods next Sunday, 1 p.m. till 6 p.m., um, where we've commissioned like a load of 99% local bear are going to play. And the headliners are a band called the Coopers, who are quite well known on the mod scene. Um, the MC for today is going to be Stuart McConey from Radio Six. Um, we hope to do an event on the 26th of July. Everything is sorted other than bands, so it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'll just end with our website, which is bearwoodshuffle.org. Follow us on Twitter, at Bearwood Shuffle. We're on Facebook as well, Bearwood Shuffle, find it on there. So again, thanks for listening. We'd be delighted to take any questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have to have a word of it later. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say, well bloody done. I'm really, really jealous of you guys for doing that. So. <laughs> Thank you. I think um, I, I'm a musician, uh, a hobbyist, and uh, it's great to see music happening on a smaller scale because a, a lot of the venues have disappeared, like you've said, um, and we don't all want to go to Mosley and King's Heath, as lovely those places are, to see bands. And Bearwood's near Wolverhampton compared to Mosley as well, where I live, so... Okay, <laughs> good good. Place. Um, questions wise, I've got a couple for you. Um, the first one would be um, putting on an event and a bandstand in a public park. Um, I can imagine there's a hell of a lot of red tape and worried looking yeah. council officers when you talked about doing this. Yeah. What were the kind of biggest challenges and how did you overcome them in terms of using a, a council run park to put on an event? Yeah, it's the bureaucracy really. So we kind of had to do a risk assessment. 
oh, not really, a risk assessment before. Fine, just make it up, get on with it. Um, you had to get a license, so you. <laughs> that thought did come to my mind as well, to be honest. Oh, we, we had a very small fire extinguisher, it was fine. We'd used that already, though, for the. Um, so you had to do a risk assessment, you had to do like application forms, um, you had to get the key to be able to get in. So there's lots of like running the range you've got to do. Then we had to get a licence. So first of all we used a temporary events notice. But that only gives you a licence to do an event for 499 people. If there's any more than that you're unlicensed. Um, but then thankfully the council through the friends, they got a catch-all licence for the whole park area so you, you could do an event any time before midnight um, and it was fully licensed enough to do any applications which was a fantastic thing when they did that. Um, so yeah, uh, fair, in terms of the councillors, they were quite helpful to start with. I yeah. mean, Sharia, the council who, she was always quite open to doing that kind of stuff. I don't kind of remember what was her job title. Um, she was done one of the officers that supported the park because there was a um, big heritage lottery fund bid that went in. So there was a, so almost like a dedicated officer that worked for the park, so it was quite easy to, to handle. And they were, to be fair, they were really helpful and you know, really wanted us to succeed. Um, it, and there's, there's like the friends group as well. As they got more active, then you had to get involved with them a little bit more. So that's perhaps when the, the sort of small p politics came into play. But as long as you sort of remembered they're in charge, then that, that, was, all, that was okay. That's great. Well, well again, well done that, because I've, I've put on some events and dealing with council red tape, particularly around parks, is not an easy, uh, an easy thing to do. That's why I was asking. Um, secondly, uh, you need bands. I have a band. We will play for free, so let's hook up later on and uh, work something <laughs> out. So. Yeah. More questions? It was you, wasn't it, Jeremy? Of course I am. Of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> Not the fire. Um, I, actually, I'm a, a recipient of the brilliant work that you've done, and uh, I'm, you know, uh, feel very shame that I haven't taken more of a, a fuller part, actually, because uh, it's the, the events themselves are absolutely fantastic. But I wanted to ask. Um, it's really about sustainability and, and about the balance between. I know both of you and, and Joe, you know, work, and so how do you actually balance between having to make a living for yourselves? and putting on events later, because as someone's just said, it takes a hell of a lot of time, a hell of a lot of patience to do, to do these sorts of things. So where does that balance, or how do you strive to make that balance to make it more sustainable? <laughs> Easy question, the question was longer than the answer. To, I, I don't know, I guess we're both quite kind of uh, driven. Like, it's kind of strange, because I think the hardest thing for us at the minute is when we started, there was 15 really keen people. And like, after you've done a couple of events, if people kind of get a bit bored or they move away, um, which seems to be a big thing to do just to get away from the shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> but you, so your kind of team shrinks and shrinks, and I think now we're at a kind of a, a, a difficult point where there's five or six of us maybe who do most of the work, and since that's happened, it's become more, more intense, I yeah. guess, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so Absolutely. yeah, it kind of ends up with like five of us doing three roles each. And in terms of like, balance with working life. Well, you do it because you love it, so you just do it. Yeah, and in terms of that, yeah, you're sitting there on your phone, on Facebook, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night, yeah. half past six in the morning, <laughs> when you're having your breakfast. So, you, you squeeze it in. Yeah. Can I just add to that? So, are you looking at how perhaps you might get paid as well in the future? Not just the bands, but no. not at no. all? No. So, is that a sustainable model? Uh, if we do it once a year, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If we do it anymore, no. I mean, we, d we did discuss the other day about setting up as a CIC or something like that, but it's kind of, I think then it starts to take more time. Um, but doing one or two a year, it's not like... It's, it's intense for the period just before it. Really. Yeah, it's intense in the lead up to it, but it's manageable. Yeah, and you kind of forget what it was like <laughs> before yeah. we do it again. <laughs> I think the, part of the hard thing for us is finding the right volunteers, finding the right people. So we've kind of stepped away now from saying, anybody just come and, you know, it's kind of like defining roles and saying, right, we need somebody who fits this model, who can do that job and do it well. Because a lot of people like to have a go at things, mm. but they're not necessarily right for that role. 
So you need committed, passionate people who, who can do a job and do it well. And that's the key to sustainability, I think. Mean. Any other questions? The hand over there. You agree? Thank you. It's, it's <laughs> almost more of an observation. I, I, years ago, I interviewed loads of active citizens, and, and a fairly common view of theirs was that not being paid made it more sustainable. Because if you're being paid, when the money dries up for the salaries, all the work stops. Um, it doesn't mean you don't need money, but, there's, but the volunteering itself is a form of sustainability. I think it's very Thank you so much. That's really no, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know.